here we are cruising on the Renogy 48 volt lithium blah 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 golf cart battery uh, the cart is flying it weighs 200 about 220 pounds less than it used to with me we are doing great uh, hi I am Bob Hutchison some of you may follow my brother Dave Hutchison and his wife Sherry. They are Freedom in a Can and they are big Renergy representatives into solar and batteries, etc. So um, I am doing my very first uh, Renergy battery project install and I thought it would be really cool to do a video and just show some steps on how to install this bad boy into uh, an electric golf cart. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Who is this dude? What is he doing on the channel? And what exactly is he talking about? Welcome back to Freedom in a Can, where we discuss solar power and share our off-grid travel adventures as full-time RVers in our solar-powered vintage travel trailer. Now, this is my older brother, Bob. He's not an off-grid solar RVer, at least not yet. He and his family used this 2007 Yamaha electric golf cart to get around their local golf carts and the community at their weekend cottage. Now, the old massive lead acid batteries, they weren't doing the job anymore. And once he heard that lithium iron phosphate offers more capacity and nearly one third the weight and almost 10 times the lifespan, well, he got pretty interested. The Renogy 48 volt lithium iron phosphate golf cart battery will provide 120% more capacity than four of his old golf cart batteries when they were brand new. This swap out will save him a whopping 214 pounds of weight. I mean, that's like a whole nother person. It will also last up to 5,000 charging cycles, giving him many, many years of happy rounds at his favorite course. Now, this is a great introductory project to anyone seeking to upgrade any type of battery in their golf cart, their RV, their boat, their cabin, you name it. Renogy includes almost everything you need in this kit. Now, we've got links to all the components and the accessories in the video description below. And if you purchase this battery or anything else from Renogy, be sure to use our link and promo code CANLIFE to save a bundle. Now, if you're thinking, no way is this your brother, look again. This is me having shaved off the beard for a trip down the Grand Canyon last summer. I'll be damned if we weren't practically twins, born three years apart. This is also Bob's first time making a video, and we're so proud. So let's get into this project. Um, just a few notes. This will not be a very professional video. It'll be pretty shaky and jerky, not up to my brother Dave's standards, but it should show you some of the basics of how to get this product installed. Okay, first off, I'm just gonna show you my golf cart right here, a 2007 Yamaha Drive. I bought it about five years ago from a dealer who was um, reselling carts from a local public golf course. So this cart got a ton of use. It came with a set of uh, four 12 volt Trojan um, lead acid batteries and those typically have a service life of about five to seven years. Um, they had been replaced once by the, um, the golf course that owned this cart and um, I really haven't touched them in the five years. So the batteries are definitely kaput and I made the decision to go to lithium iron rather than replacing the traditional lead acid deep cycle batteries. What's in the box? The battery itself. Um, it comes with an onboard charger, which I will install in the battery compartment because there'll be a lot more room. Um, various cables to connect the, uh, the uh, battery to the various devices. Uh, this right here is a battery monitor that I will install into the dash. Um, various connecting cables, etc. cetera. Uh, this particular monitor just comes with the cord, I'm sorry, charger comes with the cord that plugs into your standard 120 volt household outlet. Um, that's it, pretty simple. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is charge the battery. Um, it's shipped in a less than full state of charge. Uh, you definitely wanna charge it up fully per the instructions before you operate uh, the vehicle or after installation. I'm gonna do the charging right now while I take the old batteries out and um, take care of some other things on setting up the fit of the install. So what I've done, very straightforward, um, essentially, I've hooked up the positive and negative charging cables to the battery itself. This is the onboard charging unit, um, and it very simply connects to uh, a standard outlet through that particular connector. Couldn't be simpler. And uh, plugs directly into an extension cord. All right, as you can see, the main switch is on. The charger itself is running. 
and I'm now going to figure out how to connect the uh, Bluetooth monitor so I can read the status and see what's going on. All right, well, I successfully connected to the Renergy app and connected to the battery via Bluetooth. Um, all the status, it's, it was delivered at about 56% charged, uh, and it's telling me I've got about two and a half hours to full charge. So that's perfect. That's just enough time to get the batteries out, um, make that obligatory trip to the hardware store for the one part that I didn't get before I came up here, and um, move forward with the battery install. Um, one of the things you want to make sure you do is make sure your key is out or your ignition is off and then um, always switch to the tow mode from run. Okay, now comes the feet of strength test. Uh, I've got to remove these old batteries. You can see what I've done is removed all of the individual battery cables themselves. And in this case, um, these batteries came with a self watering system that was installed by the original golf course owner. And um, I just, I've never really used them, so I just cut them off so that it didn't, you know, complicate the removal. Um, just a couple of notes. I bought this battery puller. Um, I wish I had known that my batteries, the, the, um, so check this before you remove it. I wish I'd known that these things were going uh, on the short side instead of the long side. So I fashioned a second battery puller using my dog's harness, which I think will work just fine, and some handy mini uh, beaners. Um, I will be sure to wash this before using it on the dog because there could be some battery residue uh, as well coming out. So, um, wish me luck. Here are the old batteries pulled out of the cart. Um, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Um, you know, the, the battery lifter and my makeshift lifter really, really helped out. Um, I weighed these on a bathroom scale and pretty accurate or reasonably accurate. They are about 80 pounds each. So that's a grand total of 320 pounds of battery weight on the cart. Um, the new Renogy is listed at 106 pounds. So I'm looking at saving um, roughly 200, what's that math, 215 pounds. That's, uh, that's the weight of a good sized uh, man. So uh, I expect great performance uh, out of the cart going forward with all of that weight savings. Okay, here's a picture of the empty um, battery compartment storage area underneath the seat. Um, just a couple of notes I'm going to make. I have um, two 12 volt lines right here. Um, there's one, there's the other. Um, these are to the headlamp system. And so um, I'm gonna have to install a 48 to 12 volt converter, which I bought a couple years ago, but never hooked up um, in order to keep the uh, headlamps working going forward. Unfortunately, the size of these trays right here were just a little bit too small, only by about a half an inch in each dimension for the size of my big old Renergy battery. So what I ended up doing was cutting out a piece of two by four, and I'm going to set the Renergy battery on top of the two by four and then bolt it down into the front part of this plastic tray. So I think that'll hold it quite securely and then I'll bolt the back part to, uh, to the boards. That way the battery will sit flush on top of this tray and should be nice and secure. Um, I decided to mount it on the, essentially the passenger side with the battery terminals facing right here in the center. That'll allow my um, negative cable right here and my positive cable to reach both of those sides without any modifications. Okay, so the battery is now installed in the cart. Um, you can see I bolted it down to the newly added block of wood with lag bolts and lock washers. And then on the other side, I used the bolts that were provided by Renogy to um, bolt it down to the original plastic tray. Uh, the next step is we're gonna install the onboard charger into that open space. That was super easy. Um, all I had to do was uh, get four machine screws which uh, stainless steel, which I then um, drilled directly into the plastic. Uh, plastic was soft enough that um, it held that and it's uh, super secure as you can see. So um, the last step I need to do is just connect the charger to the battery terminal and connect the um, positive and somewhere here is the negative battery cables. Um, to the battery and everything should be ready to go. 
Okay, the last step is to install the battery indicator and the little meter that comes with it, uh, all from Renergy. Uh, this is the battery indicator cable. It installs right here on the side of the battery. Um, as you can see, it is fairly long. Uh, it says that you wanna be within three meters of the battery, no problem here. Um, I am gonna route this cable down here through this little access port, which then runs up underneath the front floorboard and behind the uh, dash into this little compartment. And as you can see, I had previously installed an analog battery monitor and I'm just gonna use that same hole. All right, this is the battery monitor that uh, Renergy sent. As you can see, it is exactly the same size as my previous uh, monitor, which uh, or volt analog monitor, which I put over there. Uh, I'm gonna put it in snug in the same hole. It looks beautiful. Um, here's what the back end looks like, and now I just need to route the wires and hook that up. So, um, this little doohickey back here is the key switch, and the way the key switch works is the right wire always has power to it, and then when the switch is activated, the return wire also gets power in creating a, uh, a, a full circuit there. So I had to figure out which one was which. The easiest way to do that is to use your good old digital uh, multimeter, connect the negative end of your multimeter to your negative terminal on your battery, to connect the positive end to each of these wires. The always on wire is always gonna show the battery voltage, which is 52 volts right now. Um, the, what they call the negative terminal, the negative wire is only gonna show voltage when the key switch is turned on. So in that case, it was the uh, one on the left-hand side. Um, I simply used a posi cap to connect this lead wire into the negative wire. And then I used the white wire, which is indicated key, on the Renergy battery model to posi tap into this wire. Uh, the reason I created an extra wire is this is also gonna run to my voltage reducer. And then I have routed that red wire following the same path underneath the floorboard back into the battery compartment. And here's the loose right here. And then I'm gonna connect that one to the voltage reducer when I install it. That way the voltage reducer will come on and off when the battery uh, key switch is turned on and off. And bingo, the meter is on and it's showing the battery voltage, 53.2, 92% charge. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to quickly review the wiring for the voltage reducer and just show you how I decided to connect it. So this is the um, positive uh, terminal that'll connect to the red positive terminal on the battery. Uh, I installed a ring terminal on that end. And over here is the negative terminal, which is gonna connect to the negative terminal on the Renergy battery. Then we have the um, yellow key switch. Uh, this is connected to the uh, key switch line that I ran when we connected the Renergy battery indicator. So I just connected that directly to the voltage reducer here using a uh, connector doohickey. Um, and then finally, we've got the 12 volt outputs. Outputs. So the red cord over here, green cord over here is the 12 volt positive terminal. And I've just hooked that up at the moment to the uh, 12 volt positive on the headlamp system. And then the negative is this black cable. And I've got that hooked up over here to the um, negative uh, terminal for the headlamp system. So um, for this particular installation, I think I'm just going to connect these wires to the ring terminal itself, because I think in the future, I may install right here a couple of binding posts where I can clamp that down and then that'll make it much easier if I wanna add another 12 volt accessory in the future. All right, let's go. Here we are cruising on the Renergy 48 volt lithium blah 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 golf cart battery um, not a very difficult upgrade and repair uh, the cart is flying it weighs 200 about 220 pounds less than it used to with me and we are doing great so thanks to my brother Dave 
for uh, leading me down this path. Uh, ciao. And there you have it. This installation was pretty easy and a great introduction to upgrading your lead acid batteries to lithium iron phosphate. Now we'll be doing a full review of this battery upgrade later this fall when they've used it for several months. So stick around and be sure to look for that. Again, we've got all the links and the components and the accessories. They're all down in the video description below. Be sure to use our promo code CANLIFE to save some cash at checkout. And please like, subscribe for more video content about off-grid solar projects like this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the road.